and uh, I asked all the candidates very broadly to just speak a little bit about their vision. Uh, what would they like to accomplish if they were elected or re-elected? And to talk a little bit about that, I'm asking everybody to limit their time to five minutes. And so I'm going to sit somewhere close by, and I've got the little cards or whatever, and I'll give you a, a minute warning. And then uh, I'll put up a little finish sign here. Just mm -hmm. do me a favor, just finish your thoughts. Don't stop in the middle of your sentence. Uh, and if that doesn't work, we're going to get a hook. And just <laughs> you have a room. There you go. All right, so uh, without further ado, uh, let's start off with the uh, uh, candidates for mayor. I believe we have two candidates uh, for mayor here with us tonight. And uh, Mr. Mayor, John Gill, would you mind speaking first? <laughs> One last quick reminder for all the speakers. Just keep in mind when you are speaking, you've got to speak into the microphone. One of our speakers last week was talking like this. The microphones don't work. So you've got to go real close. Thank you. I'm sorry that uh, even though crime is down in the city of Alaska, I'm sorry we haven't been able to capture that monkey yet. But we're still, <laughs> still working on it, I promise. Uh, I know all of you know the difference between a politician and a public servant. And, uh, you know, a politician is one who places their re-election to office as their top priority and makes decisions based on that premise. A public servant is an individual whose primary goal is to solve the problems at hand regardless of the effect it has, it has on its electability. I consider myself a public servant. When I was elected, I had no agenda. I was selected because uh, I felt like, and I ran because I felt like I could be the fair, fair to all parties and I had done that. I want to bring out, since we don't have much time, I want to bring out a few of the things that uh, we've accomplished during my four years almost. For one, I've been a full-time mayor, I've not been a part-time mayor. I've been a mayor for all Valdosta. I, along with Chairman Slaughter, have worked to unify the city and the county. Both of us have worked hard to make sure Moody does not go away. And I think we've uh, we've done a good job of that and we're being assured by a lot of people that that's not that Moody's gonna stay. I've spent taxpayer dollars wisely. In 2012 we had a budget of 86 million, that was my first year in office, with a budgeted deficit of eight million dollars. In the last budget we budgeted eighty-five million with a $6 million excess. I worked at and succeeded in getting Valdosta named as one of the five cities in Georgia to receive the Great Promise Partnership for the city school system. If you'd like to ask questions about that later, I'll be glad to explain that to you. We've completed reviews of our ethics, noise, alcohol, stormwater, and landscape ordinances and plan to review all of our ordinances. All of this to create a more business-friendly environment. We've eliminated over 200 pages of our LDR regulations. Valdosta was the first city in Georgia to provide its police force with body counts. We now are getting discounts from the manufacturer because so many cities have followed suit and they're so thankful that we have been uh, promoting that for the uh, cities and counties. Being on the MPO, I became aware of the federal money available to us for public transportation study. And I was instrumental in convincing the city and county to adopt a plan to hire a firm to provide us with the necessary information to make the decision on public transportation. Uh, let me just read this because it's, uh, the federal government provides funds each year to each MPO in the United States for planning purposes and for providing public transportation. Our MPO receives approximately one million each year for transit, but since no system exists, these funds are returned to other cities. They don't go back to Washington. They go to Moultrie, Thomasville, all of these other cities uh, to study. The MPO is allowed to keep two years of funding, so presently there is two million dollars available 
for studying and implementing a public transportation system. Way before public transportation was talked about publicly among any of us, we in the MPO were working towards uh, trying to find a solution to public transportation. As long as three years ago, if you go back in the MPO minutes, you'll find that we were discussing and asking for solutions. Uh, the MPO has recommended a study be performed to study the transit issue and develop a proposed plan. There are new innovative systems that are available, and, um, and we don't know whether they're affordable yet, and we won't know unless we have this study. So the proposed cost of the study is $125,000, with $100,000 to be paid by federal funds, and the state, uh, by the state, would provide $12,500 and leave 6250 for each of the city and the county to fund. In the last MPO meeting, which includes city, county, and regional representatives, the MPO voted to move forward with both the truck bypass and the transit study. We'll talk about the uh, uh, truck bypass in just a minute. One thing I wanted to bring out is uh, one of my opponents has mentioned that uh, his solution to public transportation is taking the eight penny of tax, hotel motel tax, and using that for um, providing funds for transportation. The eight penny of tax is not available. Uh, we're, we're guided by the Department of Community Affairs. We're told what we can spend money on. The eight penny must be extended, expended for promoting tourism by a destination marketing organization. The remainder of that eight penny must be expended on tourism product development, which is physical attraction. So that puts us back, oh gosh, I got a lot more to get. <laughs> um, I just like, you know, I'll move on. I mean, we talked about the truck uh, study, truck bypass study is something we desperately our downtown area is dangerous sometimes. So we're going to proceed with that. Uh, if I only have one minute to go, I'll just mention a few things that I want to see uh, during the next four years I'd like to see through to completion. I want to see our forest main project, the wastewater treatment plant, the gateway projects. If you've noticed the beautiful new sign on North Ballaster Road, you, you've seen that. We're putting those in all four major entrances. Uh, continue to fine tune our ordinances. Uh, next year, the city and the county will be required to renegotiate House Bill 489, which requires a consolidation of services uh, between the city and the county. And uh, of course, I feel like that that's going to require quite a bit of leadership, and I think the chairman and I can provide that leadership. Uh, of course, one of our biggest needs is jobs. We must somehow get the attention of our state, Georgia Power, and other economic development folks to bring us prospects. We've done well with our existing industry expansions, but we've not been able to attract outside investment. Other than retail, we've done extremely well with, with retail. Somehow we've got to overcome this. So at this time, I, I feel like I've got the leadership ability to accomplish these goals, and I ask that you support me in the coming race. Thank you very much.